Bag alert, major bag alert. Oh, bag, ba bag, ba bag, 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 bag. Little cough. You got a bag for me, guy? I got a bag. I got that bag. <laughs> you know, by the way, as we're recording this, I'm looking at us. Uh, we both have navy blue half sips on. I, I, it makes me think of the photo I saw on Thursday of Cam Newton and the uh, owner of the Panthers. What's his name? Uh, David Tepper. David Tepper. And I saw David Tepper, and David Tepper's wearing a navy half zip. Navy pants, Navy New Balances. And that photo was a message to Guy Haberman, who loves the color Navy. It's like, anytime I get blue shoes, oh, I like blue pants, I like blue shirts. Next thing you know, you're 50 years old, and all you're wearing is like straight up the color blue. And I saw that, and I'm like, you know, I don't usually buy red, I don't usually buy green, I don't usually buy, but maybe I should just make sure I don't end up as the old guy who just wears the one his one favorite color. It's like, oh yeah, you mean the guy that lives right there always wears blue? You know, you don't want to be the guy in the neighborhood you mean the guy that wears blue all the time? Yeah, I think I think it would be easy to mix in. I think you feel like you'd wear some black and gray. Like those are easy, solid Definitely. colors. You know, black but and But I'd gray. say those aren't like like what are colors? Like blue is a color, red is a color, green is a color, yellow is a color, orange is a color. I'm wearing like navy and darker, basically, is my word. But I'd say as a guy like as a girl, it's easier to pull off some of like the yellows and greens, you know, That's dress. True. as a guy, it's like you're gonna wear yellow stuff that often. Well, you have to like layer, you know, you have to be like Cam Newton in that yeah. photo. It was just like, he had an he's, ankle, did you see his ankle bracelet? That was like a half inch thing, gold link. Yeah. He can pull off some shit that most humans could not pull off. I guy, yeah, that's, that's one of the great PR moves in the history of PR signing Cam Newton after the Sam Darnold debacle. Like it's, let's call it what it is. Genius. But, uh, the Panthers and I got to take a big L on this. He, that's a that trade a disaster. The Niners are they still have more hope, and we don't know if it's going to work or not because they avoided doing that, which would have been easier, and they would have had more picks. <laughs> but it's like, well, who are they going to draft? There's no quarterbacks. Just keep rolling with Jimmy. <laughs> I know. All right, you ready to dive in? Podcast yeah. sponsored by Tito's Handmade Vodka, uh, number one vodka in America. Woo wee! Yep. MyBookie.ag promo code Ham One as well. Okay. Uh, here we go, John. Mailbag. As always, you go to iTunes. You leave us a review. Five stars. We appreciate that. That's how you get in the mailbag. Tell us your favorite bar and ask us a question. We appreciate you guys getting the mailbag. It's not only good for content, but it's good for the iTunes rating. So thank you for supporting the show that way. John Middlecoff, Rooftop, Walnut Creek. <laughs> Guy Haberman, Rooftop, Walnut Creek last week. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, but the search bar in Chula Vista is a great spot, says Mark. Get anything with Tito's. Just want to get your thoughts on no one on something no one else thinks is a possibility. Jed has already stated he's willing to pay Garoppolo next year. Everyone seems to think this is Garoppolo's last year, but Shanahan has been clear that he believes Jimmy gives them the best chance to win. If Lance doesn't get reps this year, he won't progress much. So what would make Kyle change his thoughts next year? I'm just saying. I would not be shocked if we're having the same Garoppolo Lance discussion at this time next year. That makes me want to cry hearing that out loud. It's not. It's, well, I, I think you you do it before you just create your own reality. He, he just you either cut him for money purposes. He does take a lot of money. You don't have picks, so you free up his twenty five million dollar cap space, or potentially you just get one of these desperate teams like the football team, like hey. We will take the contract, give us a fourth round pick, and you're able to get something for his value and take away the money. They're just going to need cap space. Like I, I think his his cap space is very valuable. Yeah, I I th I have been one of the people completely dismissing any idea of Garoppolo being on the team next year. You have to for good reason. One of the reasons you just illustrated. However, to quote Stephen A, I haven't quoted Stephen A in a while. However. Are we just sure that, like, here's a scenario for you. The Niners get through the season, whatever that looks like, and uh, Kyle Shanahan's not impressed with Trey Lance. So what's he going to do? Just run him back, even though he's kind of doubting him at that point in time? I just don't think he has a choice, guy. He made the move. I, I mean, know, I know. Jimmy, if but, Jimmy Garoppolo but doesn't were to he have a choice? Like, million the dollars. only choice is his choice. That's the only choice. I'm just well, playing me, devil's advocate here. To me, that's one where Jed, like, let's fucking see what we got here. <laughs> we we got the consumer. I swear to God, Kyle, choice. don't make me buy you out of the last three years of your contract. <laughs> All right, next up from Dre. Yo, Ham, love the pod. Barry, native, lifelong Raider fan. My questions around GM and coaches this offseason. 
Would it make sense to hire a head coach and bring him uh, and bring in his own offensive staff, but keep Gus Bradley and his staff for defense? Or would the incoming head coach want to bring in his own defensive staff? My dream scenario is this. Retain Mayock, have him play a major role in hiring our head coach, Dayball, to keep a traditionally a traditional GM head coach power structure, keep Gus on the staff, we extend Carr and all the other players that make sense, Max, Renfro, Waller, Abram, etc. Then we run this team back with a more competent head coach play caller, Dayball. Is that far-fetched? I'm scared we're just going to blow it up and start over. Uh, I don't think it's too crazy. I'm trying to think when Matt Nagy got hired with the bears, they kept Fangio. Now I would say Fangio is on a higher level than Gus Bradley, just as a coordinator, but Gus this year, and he's had success before. I think he's viewed as a good defensive guy. Not the craziest thing. When Belichick got hired in new England, he kept your boy, uh, Dante Scarnecchia and position, Brad pos- and Br- Brad Seeley. position coach though. Yeah, and Brad Seeley, special teams coach. Yeah. So it's not crazy. I, I I would say right now everything's on the table. You know, we do you know how big this game is this weekend? How big, John? How big? Well well, the Chiefs, obviously it's big because they're gonna they don't want to miss the playoffs, but they have three years of equity that if like they went nine and eight and missed the playoffs by a game, it no one's burning down the building. If the Raiders were five and two, then all of a sudden kind of crumble and miss the playoffs in an AFC that feels wide open, they lose this weekend, guy. They would just they'd have two divisional losses to the Chargers and the Chiefs, and they still have to go to Arrowhead. Now, if they win this game, they're just like, okay, you're six and three, you're in pretty good spot. But this all of a sudden you lose this game when we don't even think the Chiefs are that great. Wouldn't you yeah. say we'd start looking at the Raiders like maybe no one's safe? I think, uh, yes, I do think a lot of it is going to be like, how does this game look? Like, if you play well and you lose in a great game, even though we don't think as highly of the Chiefs, you know, I think a lot of this is like, can can Rich Passaccia just run a well-oiled machine? So if you lose a game just because somebody's going to have to lose this game. I feel like um, watching Rich, he's pretty solid. Right? Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a I, pussy last week kicking the field goal, I thought. like It's, it's like all about sticking with it. the special teams, John. Yeah. It's about time somebody stood up for the, you know, run the kickers out there. Uh, next up, B Rush, longtime listener, five time pot. With Ruggs and Arnett no longer on the team, Cleveland Furl is a backup, and Leatherwood ranked as the worst right tackle according to PFF. Should the Raiders consider trading their first round picks for proven talent in the league for future drafts? I don't think it can hurt given the exponentially high whiff rate in the first round. Definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Thoughts? I actually was thinking about this the other day that the Raiders should trade a first round pick for a guy. But then I was thinking who it's a, it's a double whammy, right? The the player has to be really sweet and has to want out or he has to be sweet and it kind of going weird. Like Diggs, who's kind of was in no man's land, right? Like Jamal Adams was like, I hate Adam Gase. I'm not playing here. Khalil's like, if you don't pay me, I'm never showing up. Jalen Ramsey told Tom Coughlin, screw you basically. So those were, and then they cost a lot. Diggs was in this, like, he's really good, but it's something weird, but it just cost a one. How many Diggs trades have really happened the last couple of years? Just a pure one for a good player who, like, you still you want. You mean just one one? Just one one for, like, an all-star Pro Bowl level guy, but might be crazy, but also might be solid. And then he's been pretty solid for them, right? It was, yeah. it was a little risky. That, to me, is what this guy's asking for because you don't want to trade, like, two ones for someone and then him be, like, Jamal Adams. Right, it's yeah. It's the, the guy because most players like Nick Bosa or T.J. Watt, the majority of guys that you would have no problem making a trade for, that team is going to want to keep. Right, it's it's a very unique circumstance for the guy worth the pick that the, also the team wants to move off from now. Right, like like Al, like the talk about Allen Robinson more so last year probably right. Yeah, and, I, and he's not even worth a one. It, it'd be like uh, I, I'm trying to even think of an example. You know, like let's say last year, the uh, the Bucks were like, you know, AB's now sweet. We're gonna go with Godwin. We're gonna use some of this money for other places. Mike Evans is available. You know, you probably get him for like a one and a four or something like that. That'd be that type of guy. Which would be, and who knows? Like you looked at that, that would have been a deal. Yeah, that I mean, wouldn't have been hurt. enough. He, he gets hurt a lot, but you know, know what I'm saying. I'm just that's AB. We don't need AB. We got enough letters around here. We already got. I mean, we don't need OBJ. We got enough letters. We got AB. That was the like, quote let's just say from, the Cowboys. Did you see like, the quote yeah, from Bruce Arians? Yeah, that was a pretty good one. 
Sorry, the Cowboys were like, what? Anybody want Amari Cooper? I was going to say CeeDee Lamb. And again, hypothetical, he would be worth more than a one, right? Mm-hmm. So th- the he players would. doesn't exist. Because I think what this guy's asking for is like, can we just land like Roquan Smith for our 18th pick? Like, no, the team wants the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. I also think it's, it's um, you know, it, it, you got to just keep swinging. Because you uh, even if you accidentally nail a first round pick, it can be a huge positive accident. And I know it's not just rugs in our net. I mean, Furl, Josh Jacobs, Colton Miller, okay, good first round pick. But before that, Gary and Conley, Carl Joseph. But don't you think if Derek, instead of making twenty one million next year, makes thirty seven million, or you know, within the next couple of years, having a guy like on the twentieth pick salary, if the guy can just be a solid player, is an incredible value. It, it's you. You have to have it. Yeah. You have to have it. Uh, next up from Chase. Love the pod. Avid listener since 2017. You guys give level-headed, rational analysis of the Niners on a regular basis with underrated impartiality. You know, I was thinking about that, John. Our impartiality is underrated. I'm leaving a review for twofold. First, because I enjoy your pod and because of the Niner fan, I can't remember the last time I was this frustrated. This obviously relates to Trey Lance, but my question is, do you think sitting a quarterback for a year or so is really that beneficial? The references to Rodgers and Mahomes seem more like the outliers than the rules of thumb. To me, it just seems to me it seems like a mechanic. You can only read the manual on a car engine so much before you have to actually put your hands on the machine itself to learn. Do you think quarterbacking is the same? Love the pod. Keep up the awesome content. Yes, you do have to put your hands on the machine to learn. I don't think there's any question about that. Carson and Carson Palmer Carson Palmer sat a year. Like there Carson been- Palmer said, you're behind Kitna. I do think we could go through this and it really answer the question, but I think we do this a lot where it's, you know, the, football is not, it's not the law, like literally the law that's practiced in courtrooms where if something, if some ruling happened in 1939, everyone then refers back to that ruling as some sort of, as a precedent for rulings that follow. It doesn't work like that in sports. You don't get to go, oh, the Rogers thing worked. Because what I would say is, yes, it was with Aaron Rodgers. All the Mahomes thing worked, yes, with Patrick Mahomes. But I don't know if this person is Patrick Mahomes or Brian Brom, who was supposed to be like the next guy. I don't know, right? Like Brian Brom was going to be the next guy for the Packers. It's crazy to remember that. So like we use these guys as examples all the time. And I, I, I've been railing on this when it comes to Trey Lance. If he could just be like Josh Allen. Well, there's a Josh Allen. So what if he's just a really good Trey Lance? That's good enough. I think there's something to what Chase is saying. You know, like, of course, the guys we use as examples are the successful ones. Well, they are by nature. These are the outliers in NFL history. Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback outlier. Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback outlier. Even Carson Palmer, relative to most quarterbacks, is a quarterback outlier. My pushback, if I was going to take Kyle and the you know front office's defense of the way they approached it, I would go well f- for your mechanic analogy. Trey Lance would be the equivalent of he studied to be a mechanic and he only worked on Toyotas. Then he came to the 49ers and he works on everything from Ferraris to Pintos to Hummers to tanks. You got to be able to handle it all. And we tried to let him fuck with a Ferrari and he was holding on for dear life and it was going to be challenging. And then he got banged up. His wrench broke. We took a step back. We let the other mechanic just keep handling everything for this year. I I understand it for them, just given his his experience level coming into the season. And then what we saw really briefly, because everyone who thought we were crazy hard on him, like Kyle probably thought, like, Jesus, we're holding on for our ass with this guy right now, and he needs yeah. a lot of work. But I here's where, as this season goes, like, It'd, it'd be an easy, if you're out of it, we'll let him work on a couple, let him work on a Hummer and let him work on a, a you know, a Honda. You know, let him play the Jags and let him play the Titan, right? You don't have to, and you can always throw Jimmy back. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> this year, it's already a pretty big experimental year with him. But back to the first question we had, I, I think there would be riots if they if they didn't let him experiment and, you know, work next year, right? Yeah. P- people would riots. Be, what are, what are we doing? Right, in right it's a great America. All right, next up, John, this comes from Mr. Temptation. It's a question. Who had a worse draft, the 2020 Raiders or the 2021 49ers? Can you all follow me at Delta 49er X? 
Thanks, fellas. Love you all, YouTube channel. Love you all, YouTube channel. Everybody go follow Delta 49er X. All right. Does he have good content? I don't know. All right, John. So uh, let's see. Can we pull this up here? The 49ers, just, I mean, everyone probably knows this anyway, but let's, let's, let's get into it. The 2020 Raiders draft, Henry Ruggs, Damon Arnett, uh, Lynn Bowden, Brian Edwards, Tanner Muse, John Simpson, and Amik Robertson. Okay. So Ruggs off the team, Arnett's off the team, Bowden's off the team. Neither one made it past year one and a half. Muse Bowden got cut in camp. Yeah, Muse got cut fast. Robinson, was a third rounder, by the way. Robertson, Robertson was a, a healthy scratch, and I think Simpson starts, but he's not very good. Irony, again, there's a lot of guys. Those were all top four round picks. Like, I read a bunch of names. You would have thought three of those were sixth or seventh rounders, but no. Yeah, and like, and like you said, the first two were top, what What was our net? Two top 20 picks? 12 and 19, yeah. Uh, that, that, to me, you're defined on drafts. Hold on. <laughs> Let's go to the Niners. He said 2021. I'm surprised he didn't say uh, 2017. But 2021, we know this one. Trey Lance, Aaron Banks, Trey Sermon, Ambry Thomas, Jalen Moore, Diamador Lenore, Talanoa Hufanga, and Elijah Mitchell. Okay, now that we got that established, go ahead. Well, you know, say this for the Raiders. Ruggs, until he got in the car crash, would have been the best player in both drafts, right? Obviously, we, we didn't have enough information on Lance, but Ruggs was headed toward, like, you, you would have been able to make the argument, this kid will make a Pro Bowl in his life. And I don't think it would have sounded that crazy. Might not have yeah. happened, but you could have said that, and no one would have looked at you crazy. The Niners, you might be, could you say that about Elijah Mitchell? One year, could he rush for 1,200 yards, you know? You might say that. I mean, I that's that can, I that can happen with Kyle's running back, sure. I, yeah, I think he's been one that. of the better yes. rookies I've seen this year. Like, he's a yeah. legit rookie. But to me, the, the, the curveball in this whole thing is like, what's Trey Lance? Yeah. You know? If Trey Lance is a player, then obviously the Niners wipe him out. If Trey Lance is a bust, they're both all-time whiffs. I think um, uh, I think the fact that the Niners draft has a bunch of players in it that they could use right now, like an off- offensive lineman and corners, and they're not using any of them, it puts that one off to a pretty bad start. Hufanga uh, starts and Elijah starts. Huf- yeah, that's true. Hufanga starts because other people got hurt. Still starts. He's an NFL player. Next up, this is from Delta College Center. Give these men their flowers. Uh, John mentioned on the last podcast that interior linemen and running backs are the easiest positions to draft, which immediately made me think of Javon Kinlaw, Mike McGlinchey, Trey Sermon, Aaron Banks, etc. Now I'm crying. Question. The obvious storylines regarding the issues with the Niners stem from Kyle's coaching in the quarterback play. Is there anything else to this? There's a lot of random theories in the swamps of confused and disgruntled fans. I'm just wondering if there's any other thoughts on what happened this year and how to get out of this, both in the short and long term. P.S. As a Cal fan, thanks for hosting and jinxing Jonathan Smith. P.P.S. In preparation for ski seeing, the best apris, what's A-P-R-E with the little Enya over at S? A press bar in the best in Aspen, Colorado is 39 degrees at the W Aspen Delta college center is living the W Aspen bar app. And it's got, it's French. Sorry. I don't know my, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's that. crossed my mind to go on a winter vacation sometime. Like maybe in like, you know, the week before the super bowl or maybe after yeah. the super bowl. And I was like, I've never been to Aspen park city and Aspen crossed my mind. That's, that's a good spot. You know, not that far uh, away from us. No, people love probably. That. I, I, well, people if you had to it. guess, you know, uh, the going rate for a nicer hotel in Aspen or Park City, you know, in like February, five a night, yeah, at least. <laughs> I was gonna like a night. You're talking about like a nice yeah, hotel. No, I mean, I'm not talking like their Four Seasons, but just like right. something you feel pretty good about. That's right yeah. in the mix. Eight yeah. fifty. I would say Napa prices. What's Napa? I mean, you can stay at a. Mm, Less than great hotel for four hundred bucks at Napa, I think. Yeah. So a nice one's probably seven eight hundred dollars, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe six twenty five. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Nice. So what do we? Uh, any theories? The obvious storylines stem from Kyle's coaching and the QB play. I do think uh, I go back to this. Isn't even a theory. I think it's a fact. They overrated bringing the whole team back. 
specifically, we could, you know, there's multiple things that matter here, but relying on Raheem Mostert with an injury history got hurt. Jason Verrett with an injury history got hurt. I think they overvalued hurt players being healthy. That's that's one thing I think was a major factor. I'm not sure if that's a theory. It's just a thing. Yeah, I mean, I I wonder if they could do everything over. Would they have traded up to three? Or would they have just stayed at 12 and kept their picks and drafted Mac Jones at 12? Yeah. I know it's, I think I know it's easy to play that game. Just, and now, it, that could change, right? Whatever your answer is to that now could change, depending on what happens with Trey Lance. But I think they would trade not be like the chance to be – not having you all know, the picks. six and two right now with Mac Jones as starter. Yeah, just if they were six and two right now, they'd be so much happier. Well, and course. they'd be like, "We don't. What are we worried about a quarterback for? We're six and two. They'd be six and two. They would trade that, six and two. But, right but now. is that what is that with Jimmy or Mac? Whichever. I don't think it matters. I'm just saying that scenario. They could. They would be. If you said to them, you could be six and two and undo that trade. They'd be like, "Yeah, I think they would do that right this second." Well, yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> For six part and two, the, not even like Super Bowl, just six and two. Well, part of the problem being three and five and playing the Rams on Monday night, do you know that they're a four point underdog? And I asked someone, yeah. like, what, what that spread would have been like week one, right? The look ahead spread. Like, like oh, Niners. Niners, minus three, you know? Yeah. So it's a seven point already. Maybe swing. more. Remember, the Niners in some places were favorites to win the division. So it might have been more than three. Yeah, they'd beat the Rams several times. So it could have been like four and they a half. They hadn't lost I mean, 20 straight could in a row. Could be a potential eight, eight point yeah. swing here. Yeah, it's, it's a disaster day. Any other theories? Uh, you know, a, a lot of people ask me this. I, there is some level of bad luck, some level of like last week, for example, the fumbles, and then they get a fumble and they don't fall on it. It goes right out of Fred's. Like, are they as bad as we actually think they are when you really think about them? Or is it just part of they're not winning and the expectations are super high? Because like the Colts, I think the Colts, when the dust settles, are going to end up like 10 and 7. I think the Colts and the Niners are like the exact same team. Like we saw them play. It was literally in a monsoon. They were the same team. And I just wonder if, because everyone was expecting 12 wins, are, are the Niners still going to get to like eight? Like the, the Niners aren't going to win four, right? I do think there's absolutely an element of bad luck, for sure. For sure. If you but, have, I, but again, that's where well, I go back to. Part of the luck is Jason Verrett got hurt. Well, Oh, yeah. yeah, the injury luck. But like Kinlaw was on their team. Like that's a bad, like he's just, they were stuck with him. What were we going to do? Right, but they drafted him. I know. Did you see that when they did the surgery, they had to like reconstruct the ACL? Cool, 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 cool. cool, cool. Last one, John. This one comes from uh, Instagram. I wanted to mix this in. This is from Brian. He said, "Sitting here watching the absolutely beautiful Golden State Warriors offense to defense flow. Imagine the Niners with this type of execution. Imagine the Warriors are in a fantastic." My mom Wednesday night. My mom texted me. She's like. Do you have le NBA League Pass? And I said, uh, I actually do. I canceled it because I didn't realize it like reactivated on its own for the last three months at forty bucks a month. But uh, but it's still active. Like it, it doesn't cancel for a few more days. Why? She's like, oh, I want to watch the Warriors. Keep in mind, she has free access to the Kings. And uh, they were playing. They were playing last night. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and uh, she said, and then she said to me, well, how much is League Pass? Like I'd, I'd like to watch the Warriors all the time. So there you go. That's the Warriors for you. I, I would say the biggest difference is why Seattle, even when things are off, it's why you know I people can talk shit about the Chiefs. Curry is like having Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson or Tom Brady or like when you don't have a quarterback, things can just get weird, right? I mean, even if your quarterback's solid, like luckily this year, Dak's gotten a lot better, so he'd be a bad example. Like Cousins, there, there's a reason that like some games they look really good, some games they look off. Their record, you go, they're three and nine. You're like, God damn, they've been in every game. When you don't have the quarterback, when you don't have, like Steph Curry just, he stirs the whole drink. Like watching him, he, he's incredible. I mean, he's throwing these alley-oops like he's known as a oh. crazy scorer, and then he throws the alley-oop to get GP2. That, that, how, what about the athlete genes in that guy, family? Yeah. Holy uh, moly. Uh the um, I mean they're a championship team. I'm not breaking any news. They got Steph. They got, like I every time I watch them, I think you can't trade Draymond for Ben Simmons. Draymond's a championship player. And the last time I saw Ben Simmons in the playoffs, he was like, I want to know part of it. No, thank you. I was gonna look for. I know that I think Friday night's their last uh, game home for a while. I, I've never been a Chase Center. Yeah. Did you look I at tickets? Wanna, uh, I didn't, but 
just because I fits last night was like, you know, it's the last game of the homestand on Friday, so it's like maybe I'll catch them when they come back. Yeah. I just wanna I just wanna attend. You know, it just feels like uh problem is the better they get, the more expensive ticket <laughs> gets. <laughs> I know. All right, on that note, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for hanging with the uh, mailbag.